Good morning, everybody. This is Steve, the designer and creator of Alliance of the Sacred Sons. This is going to be the first in several Let's Play tutorial videos. This first one will cover three major elements. It will cover how to set up a new game. It will cover the main interface and it will cover win-loss conditions and some basic broad strategy. So we're going to start. We're going to select New Rain. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to choose our primary culture of our house. Now there are six main cultures. We have Spartic, Mercantile, Traditionalist, Neo-American, Technic, and Gilded Worlds. Each culture has an affinity with it. It has a house affinity and it has a character affinity. So you have a house skill and a character skill. Also, certain houses are more likely to deal positively with houses of similar culture, and some houses are likely to deal negatively with houses of different cultures. So I like, I'm kind of a science person, so I'm gonna select Technic, Science Affiliate, and Mind Freak. So Science Affiliate gives us a house tradition bonus of plus 20 in science, and it gives all characters associated with the house a plus 15 in their intelligence skill. So we'll go ahead and select it and we'll move on to the next step which is choosing my portrait this is purely optional there are male and female portraits um, there's really no difference in the game except aesthetics uh, I typically like this guy he seems like he knows what he's about so the next step is going to be the training now this is your personal skills you have five primary skills as Emperor you have intelligence perception persuasion intimidation and charm these skills are used during skill checks when you have events where you select an option, they're also used during character-to-character -character interactions, particularly intelligence, intimidation, and persuasion. And they're used in other more secret ways, which we'll get into later. So these are five broad categories. Uh, we have generalist, warrior, mercantile, administrator, humanist, and spy master. So these essentially are skill groupings that are based on their meaning. I like to be mercantile. It gives me high intelligence, which is a good base skill, and a decent persuasion. So I'm gonna go ahead and select that. My next step is choosing my house traditions. This is a very important step because it essentially sets up your empire uh, for each step. So let me go through. We have academic, which the higher this is, the better that your academics will be in researching. Economic which means the higher this skill is, the better your characters will be in economic skill, which translates to running planets and systems better. Engineering, which increases their engineering skill, which translates into uh, more build points generated when building new structures and sectors on a planet. Farming, which improves their farming skill, which translates to better food generation on a planet if put in as a viceroy. Government skill, which improves their government skill and improves their ADM generation. High tech, which improves their high tech skill and improves their energy output. Military, which improves their military skill, very useful for admirals, and also sets the amount and type of technology that you have when you start in the military. In other words, the higher this is, the more ships you'll have, the more forces you'll have, and the higher technology you'll have to start with. And finally, mining, which affects your mining skill and affects how much and how well you mine from your planets that you have your character set as Viceroy. So they're all important in their own way. They also set your starting stockpile. For example, if you have a low mining skill, you won't have many materials to start with. If you have a low farming skill, you won't have much food to start with. But if you have a high farming skill or a high mining skill or a high high tech skill, then you'll have greater stockpiles. Of course, that will be at the expense of other things. So. Government is usually an important step. Um, notice we have 125 points. You always have a base of 10 points. You can't go below that. And then you see here my academic bonus from my culture selection, my minimum is 30 points. I cannot go below that because this is my 20 bonus for my culture bonus plus my 10 free points. So I'm gonna go ahead and pump my academic up to about 50 points. Uh, economic is an important skill because if you, one of the ways you can lose as emperor is to have your empire go bankrupt. And having a high economic skill means your viceroys are generally better at running their planets and systems and provinces and can run it more efficiently, meaning they can get more money out of it. So I'm going to set the economic skill to about 35. Engineering is also important if you want to build on a planet. The higher the engineering skill, the more build points 
that your planets generate, this means they can build new sectors faster, like a farm sector or an academic sector or a government sector. Uh, it basically allows your planets to grow faster. So I'll put a little bit into that. Now farming is important in that if you run out of food, your people will revolt. Um, it, it's not a sexy skill, but it is important. I typically don't set it very high because my play style, I try to trade for food and I try uh, um, basically to get it through my trade network. So I'm only gonna set that to 15. Government is another important skill. This uh, allocates the amount of ADM that's generated from each planet. Um, uh, ADM is administrative capacity. This what's, is what allows you to do projects, which is a big part of the game. So I typically set this pretty high. High tech, uh, this creates energy. This sets the high tech skill and you have what are called fluxmen on a planet, and they actually generate energy from the planet at high-tech facilities. Um, if you have this low, you won't have much energy to start with. And energy runs pretty much everything in the game. It runs your forces, it runs your ships, it runs your planets, uh, it runs your, most of your projects, take a, a significant amount of energy. So I'm gonna go ahead and set it to about 20. And then military is also important. The higher this is set, the more uh, skills you have at start also the bigger uh, opening fleets you have. So I'm gonna set that to 30. And finally, mining. Um, it's good to have a little bit in mining. So that's my final traditions. Now I can always go back here. If I don't like them, I can go back and reallocate. Um, this is kind of a balanced play style. I don't have anything above 50, uh, which is my academic, which means I'll be able to research a little bit faster. I'll, I'll generate more science points. All right, our next step is going to be our house library. This is simply, again, uh, we're going to have more choices as the game progresses. Uh, I kind of like this one and this one. Uh, that's kind of my old one. We're going to actually have new sigils uh, in a future update. You'll also be able to select your uh, mid banner and lower footer. So that's coming soon. Finally, you choose your name. Simply, you choose your first name. I will be Steve and Hawkstorm. And so this is kind of who I am. Rise, Steve Hawkstorm the first. Yay! And we're going to continue. And the final thing is we'll select our size of galaxy. Since this is a training game, I'm going to go ahead and select a small galaxy. This typically sets us up with one province, possibly two. Uh, and it also gives us a slightly smaller empire to work with. So we're going to go ahead and select. And we're going to start our reign. All right. Now, I do want to emphasize that there's this game is not set up in any way. Uh, this is a brand new game. I have no idea what's going to happen. I have no idea what's going to generate. Uh, so we're just going to take it as it comes. So we start. Welcome to your reign. Uh, Grand Vizier Crassus. He just gives you a little introduction. Um, pop up, give you assistance as needed. Um, we'll kind of show that information. So, all right. So I want to kind of take us around the main menu. So the first thing we have here, this is our house information. You can see that this is our house library and we are power level eight. Uh, this is important when we are trying to determine relative power. So power is always in Roman numerals, except for your primary power here. Uh, generally, uh, power level uh, is going to be, and there is also a difference between house power and personal power. They are kind of on different scales, much as a planet power is different from individual power. This is your emperor. You can click on here to get to the emperor screen. Uh, we'll get into that in a future tutorial. Uh, but know for now that this is your popular support and that this is your fear. Now notice that you have tooltips. Everything here is tooltipped. Uh, eventually every single object in the game will have a tooltip with it. Uh, for now the main, main UI is tooltipped as well as some other uh, issues. So right now I have a starting uh, popular support of 50% and I have a fear level of zero. So um, basically what popular support is. So your popular support is the sum of your popular support and your fear. People can support you in one of two ways. They can either support you voluntarily because they like what you're doing, or they can fear you and they are more uh, subversive to you. So your popular support represents the combination of voluntary support and involuntary support. So your fear can never go above your popular support, but it can equal your popular support, which means that your fear, basically everybody fears you that supports you. Uh, anything above that, so that means 50% uh, do not support me at this time. Uh, one of the major goals in the game is to try to increase your support any way you can because if you have low support, not only does it affect your power, but it also affects possible riots as your empire destabilizes. 
And it also affects characters' chances of doing what you ask. The less supported you are by the Empire, the less likely they are to do what you ask if they're not already uh, allied with you. All right, the next is the your uh, Emperor Power. This is probably the most important number in the game. If it ever reaches zero, then you essentially lose the game. You become a figurehead, uh, and you no longer have any power. At that point, the Great Houses would take over, and the uh, <laughs> Celestial Empire would be disassembled. So um, power determines essentially what you can do in the game. It also determines how likely you are to succeed. The higher a power you have, uh, the more likely you are to persuade characters, even characters that don't like you, to do what you ask. You, uh, remember, you're not a god. A big part of the game is the idea that this is more of an oligarchic monarchy, and uh, the houses that make up the empire do not necessarily have to go along with what you're doing. Uh, so much like a uh, democracy. So um, the power basically is almost like influence. So you want to try to raise that at any point. If it gets below about 150, you're in serious trouble. All right, another very, very important stat. This is your AP, which is your action points. Um, so you start out around six. Um, you, this is what you use essentially to do everything in the game. You are not immortal. Uh, you, can, you are not uh, timeless. There are only a certain amount of things that you can do in any given turn. So everything you do, whether you talk to a character, whether you interact with your budget, you interact, change something, production, anything, generally costs one action point. To initiate a project costs two action points. And you'll see those costs throughout the game. You'll see them on buttons and you'll see them. So you'll never be surprised when something costs a certain amount. Uh, this number can be influenced by several factors. It can be influenced by your personal health. Basically, the less healthy you are, the less action points you have. Also by your spirit, which is your mental health. Um, the lower of a mental health you have, it also affects your AP. Our next category is our uh, estimated future budget. So right now, if the turn were to end now, which right now it is, our budget for this period would be 500 what are called BCs, billion credits. And we'll get into the budget screen in a future uh, Let's Play. Um, you basically want this number always to be high. Uh, if it's ever negative, you will have to uh, make it up through your house treasury. Uh, you cannot run the empire on a negative, negative budget. Uh, if you cannot make it up on your treasury, then the empire has gone bankrupt and you lose the game. So very important to keep this above zero if possible. Next one is the administrative capacity of your empire. This is an extremely important one because this shows basically how much you can do in the empire project wise. Every project takes a certain amount of ADM over time to do. Now you see here that each house, there are your house and then five other what are called great houses, they contribute ADM to the empire. Now you see the percentage that is a percentage based on their relationship with you. Now you can see I'm at 100% because it's my house. The ruling house is always at 100%. And then you can see the other five, Hawken, uh, Ijaraja Bass, Iloa, Halcyon Musharraf, and Waldegrave are all at 35% because they have a lower relationship with me, which I will show you later in this video. Another very important is energy. Basically, this is your stockpile for the empire. Uh, everything you do that that is any sort of project military action uh building logistical network uh pretty much anything you do empire on an empire scale requires energy so it's very important to watch this value em energy is generated by your high-tech facilities on planets and those are run by flexman all right the next one is your ship components this is what generates is what is used by your shipyards to make ships so ship components are generated from ship component facilities on a planet, um, and they are staffed by ship component engineers. So this number um, we'll get into in a little more detail when we start to dive into the military system. Uh, but again, if you want a strong military, you don't want to let this number hit zero or your shipyards will not work. Now this little plus button, this gives us kind of an extension of some other perhaps less important um, metrics, but still you may want to see them. Uh, quickly, this is your house treasury. This is your basic materials, heavy materials, and rare materials. Your house treasury is how much you have in your house treasury for things like allocating to your budget, uh, if you want to put a little extra in, and then of course uh, buffering it. It can also be used personally uh, for certain things like bribing characters and some, some uh, with some other events. Basic heavy and rare materials are used in projects. 
Uh, basic materials are used primarily on planets. Uh, to build things, it's kind of your basic, like your concrete and your metal, things like that. Heavy materials are primarily space-based. These are used heavily to build starships, um, shipyards, star bases, logistical networks, anything that's space-based, you'll need a lot of heavy materials. And rare materials are kind of uh, unique materials. Um, they were a little bit higher in the uh, periodic table. So they are not used very much, um, but you also don't generate very much of them. So those are typically used in higher class ships, um, higher class uh, installations, and, and again, primarily space-based and military-based. All right, this is your uh, main menu button. If you click on it, it simply gives you some options. This will be redesigned a little bit um, kind of as we go. All right, down here, we have four main windows. You'll be using these a lot. Uh, the first one is your... Um, the first one is your, sorry, is your projects. Uh, we open it and currently we don't have any known active projects because we just started the game. But if you want to see where people are, um, this is where uh, you can see what projects are being built, not only by you, but by other people in your empire. Next here, this is your intern summary. So it has two tabs. The first one is your victory conditions. Now we're going to go into this now. So there are two ways that you can win currently. You can have an overlord victory, which means that your house is five times more powerful than the other five houses combined. When that happens, you can actually dissolve the Celestial Council, which we'll get to in a moment, and you can rule as a tyrant. Um, so that is one way of winning the game. The other way is through the Lazarus victory, which enables you to essentially, it's a science victory. It allows you to, you and your civilization to live forever. I'm not going to spoil too much of that, uh, but you can read a little bit more of that in the science. All right, so here shows your power change. It shows your minerals changes over last term. Potential goals, you don't have to follow these. These are just potential things that currently, based on the state of the game, you might want to pursue. And then also potential issues. You can see, because we didn't put a lot, remember I said we didn't put a lot into mining uh, or energy, um, that's why our basic stockpiles are low. If we'd have put more into that at the beginning, then we would have a higher stockpile. But of course, we would have had to compromise other places. So it's a potential issue. The other part is the event summary. So we have critical, serious, moderate, informational, and positive. Anything critical is going to go over here. You'll be able to open it on the event panel. Everything else will go here. Uh, you typically will be able to click directly on most events. So, for example, a factory has been built on Wanderer. So we'll be able to click and go straight to the system where Wanderer is. And you can actually go and click on Wanderer and see that, indeed, a new system or a new uh, factory has been built. So we don't necessarily see it here, but you can see the factories online. The next step is your Celestial Council. This is primarily where you can see your primes. These are your, prime, your five primes here. Now your primes are essentially the second most powerful people in the empire. They each head up a department, if you want to think of it as a cabinet. You have your domestic prime, you have your economic prime, you have your intel prime, your military your war prime, and your science prime. And of course, they head up your, those five departments respectively. And of course, here's you. And then you also have three at-large council seats. They can be filled as needed. They can also be uh, ejected as needed. Typically, the council will propose bills periodically um, to change things in the empire. Um, and then you can do some wheeling and dealing to change people's votes. It typically costs power to do so. We, and then, of course, here is the dissolved council option when you have uh, achieved at least five times the power of the other houses combined. So the last one here is the encyclopedia. Uh, as you do more things in the game, uh, more will be added. This simply shows you different things about the game. Uh, we're probably going to add a lot more to start with. Uh, we've changed our tutorial setup slightly, so there'll be a lot more to set up probably in the next update. But if you have a question about something, especially when the tutorial is added, you'll always be able to come back here and read and get more information. All right, this is your budget due button. Uh, this tells you what needs to be done in order to move to the next turn. It can show budget due. It can show uh, event, active event, which actually we do have an active event right now. This is the event button. Uh, it can show science due. And we'll get into that uh, next, next uh, LP. Uh, this shows the current year and the current quarter. Every turn is considered a quarter of a year. <clears throat> so every year, several things happen. 
Um, every four turns, you reset your budget, you reset your science allocations. Um, you don't necessarily have to change the allocations, but you do have to at least sign off on them. Here we have our science, this is our nexus bar, and we have our seven nexuses. These five kind of correspond to the uh, uh, primes that I told you about. This is science nexus, and I'll just kind of show you, um, and we'll dive into all this a little bit later, but you can kind of see uh, this is our military nexus. This is our Intel Nexus. This is our Economic Nexus. This is our House Nexus. There's not really a Domestic Nexus. Domestic is sort of a catch-all for taking care of your, of your population. Um, and then we have what's called our Character Nexus, which kind of helps us uh, manage our people and our relationships. And finally, our Stellar Nexus, which kind of lets us see kind of drill down into our systems and provinces and gives us some high level information about our provinces and systems. Here, these are our command modes. Now you can see right now I'm in economic command mode. This means that all my projects that I have available and my system and planet and province views will be economic in nature. So for instance, if I want to see how much ADM I'm generating on a planet, I would go to political mode where I could then see where I can see my total ADM, and then I have sub views here. Um, if I want to see a military, I simply go to my military command mode. I can get an overview, and then of course I can see my region list and get more detail about uh, the control of the planet. Uh, this here is the planet information display. This shows you the type of planet, whether it's a new colony, established colony, or a capital. This shows you the owner, shows you the civilization, which right now there's only one and it shows you the system and province. Now you can click on this to get more information. Um, this shows you the value of the planet. This shows you the ADM generated. This shows you the develop, planetary development level. This is very important when you're trying to determine how much a planet can generate in, in uh, gross, gross planetary product. This is the population of the planet. This is the military value of the planet. And this is the um, gross, uh, gross uh, uh, planetary product of the planet. Uh, and if you click on here, this shows you the stats of the planet itself. This has an 80 bio level, uh, which is good for farming and, and reproduction. It also means you spend less on infrastructure. This is the energy average level of the planet. The higher, the more energy can be pulled from the planet. This is the basic material level, the heavy material level, and the rare material level. And this is the amount of infrastructure built. What this means is that we can support up to 220 million pops um, across all my, my regions without issues. Now, now sometimes POPs will move to where the jobs are, and we'll get into more detail about the POP model and the economic model uh, in a future Let's Play. Uh, but know that if you want top-level information, you can find it here. All right, and of course, there's the overview, and this gives you information about the different regions on the planet. Um, there's really not a lot you can do on this screen. It just kind of shows you, for instance, if you have overcrowding, it shows you the development uh, on that in that particular region. Think of a region as like a country on within the planet. They're self-governing. There's nothing you can do um, to, to micromanage regions. Um, you know, you are the emperor. You don't, you don't fiddle in individual countries and regions, but it does give you an idea of what's going on. All right, over here is your active leader. So since we have the Viceroy selected for the planet, um, you get a little transmission, and then you can also click on them to open up their uh, character screen, which we will also get into in a future Let's Play. All right. And of course, you every character card is pretty much the same. It shows their house, it shows their rank, and it shows your uh, relationship with them. And sometimes they'll have additional information. Since you're a viceroy, this shows their um, government skill. Uh, this is important when determining ADM generation. Um, so typically, this will show the most important statistic. All right, to back out of a planet, you always right click. So anytime you want to get out of a um, window or get out of something, you always right click. So for example, if I click on this window, I simply right click to get out. If I want to go to the system mode, I right click. And this takes me to the system mode. If I right click again, this takes me out to the galaxy view. Now if I want to zoom in, I push my mouse wheel forward and that takes me to a 90 degree top down. You can kind of see um, that. If I want to go to a province, I click on, see where it's kind of, I click on and now I'm in the province mode. And you can see my province governor is down here. And you can see the other planets are not shown, only the planets that make up my province. 
To go into a system, you simply hover over the system that you want to go into and left click, and you will zoom into the system. And then to go into a planet, you simply hover over the planet and click, and you will go into the planet. And you'll notice again that depending on the command mode you're in, you will see different information. So if I zoom out, now I see economic mode. This shows the resource needs, retail network, trade hubs, if any, star base level, etc. If I go to military, I, sh I show my military forces, my shipyards, um, and then you know information related to military. So um, you you think in terms of modes. So um, you know if I want to do something military, I need to be in military mode. If I want to do something economic, I need to be in economic mode, etc. And so on. All right. So the last thing is going to be this is our event bar. Uh, this shows critical things that typically need to be addressed. Um, this is an event. Uh, when I click on it, it will pop up an event. Typically, I cannot move forward and if I have an active event. Um, and so typically, I'll have several choices. I'll just kind of pick one to kind of move forward. You'll see typically you have a choice. You have a resolution. You have something that happened, either positive or negative. And then you'll typically have a spirit increase or decrease. We talked a little bit about spirit earlier. All right. So you see now I can't move forward because I have my budget is due and also my science is due. So we're going to talk a little bit about broad strategy and then we're going to end this LP here. We're going to pick it up um, with kind of setting up our first turn, what that looks like and kind of looking at our strategic situation. So in the game, the object is to either win by brute force or win by science. Either way, you have to grow your house. Remember, you have five different houses that you have to look at, and all of them have a relationship with you. And typically at the start of the game, um, they're not going to be very positive. You may have some allies, you may not. Uh, every game is different, depending, especially depending on the culture that you select. Uh, certain houses, they all have a, a culture, and if you share a culture, then they'll typically be allies with you. Um, the houses are, send, are randomly generated. There are about 15 uh, great houses in the game, so you will only see five at a given time. So games will play very differently from one another, and every situation will be different. You will always start in Enosis. Enosis is always your home province, and you will always start uh, on the Osiris as your uh, home uh, system, and you will always have New Terra as your capital. But beyond that, everything else can be different. So when you're considering your strategic situation, you have to think about you cannot go it alone. You are not powerful enough to ignore the other great houses. For instance, if I go into... Here, I can look at Great House Hawken, and I can see they're very strong in academic and high tech. So I am not very strong in those things. I'm very, well, I'm fairly okay in academic, but I'm weak in high tech. That means that my fluxmen aren't going to be very good at generating energy. And as you can see, I don't have that much energy. So one way of getting more energy is to befriend House Hawken so that their pops, who are more skilled in energy gathering because of their house traditions um, will migrate to my my planet or they will even give me energy from their planet through the trade network and we'll get into all that again in a future LP but you just want to think about how can I grow my power um, how can I make this number go up how can I make this number go up and how can I make this number goes up these are the three key numbers to the game uh, along of course with your support um, if, you're, if your power is low and your support is low, you're going to find it very, very difficult uh, to do anything in the game. A lot of times you'll have to resort to a military solution. Uh, people always respect the military, but of course then your support is based on fear, and that is very hard to keep up. Um, you know, One thing about fear is that it's easy to grow, but it's very also very easy to lose. And then if you lose your fear support and you have no popular support you know, kind of supporting it, then um, your empire will kind of fall in anarchy. So you have to be careful about projecting fear. Um, make sure that that's something that you can sustain. All right, so we're going to get a little bit more into grand strategy next LP. The main things we're going to cover, we're going to cover your house relationships. We're going to cover your turn one situation. And we're going to cover turn one strategies, particularly in setting your science goals, setting your economic goals, and getting a sense of what short-term and long-term goals you should be setting in the first 8 to 12 turns. Thank you very much for watching. Have a great day.